In lesson six, we will learn how to submit uh, your public key to the key server and also to search for other people's public PGP keys. So now we are back. We are logged in as a webmaster, which is the account that I made the keys for. Uh, I can go in to manage my keys and confirm. Yes, it's the right one. It's the private key and the public key is here. What we want to do now is to submit our public key to the key server. We know here, as we talked about in the introduction, that you can actually send your public key straight to one email address, but you can also submit your public key to the key server. And the key server is an online open source server that stores all the public keys. There's no security issues in this because it's only the public keys, it's not your private key. So let's go ahead and click Submit to Key Server. It basically tells you that it's this key that I'm trying to uh, upload. And I say Submit to Key Server. And now it says that uh, this key was added to the database successfully. What this means is that other people can now find your key when they search on the server. So what I will do is to log in with another account. I'm logged in as Karuni. Uh, this is not the same. You can see I have nothing here. I will now try to see if I can search for that key so I can send an email encrypted to webmaster at karuni.com. So I do a key server lookup. I write webmaster and I click search. And here you go. Here I can see that the key is visible and it seems to be the right one. You remember the length that we decided. And here you also see the date that it was created. So when I click this and say, okay, it will import the key for this person into my key ring. And you will see it down here. And it will also tell you which key uh, email it is uh, connected to. As you see, the first one is blank, but that's because I have not created uh, keys for this account that is called contact. But here you can see definitely this is his private key. So this is how you do it. I will go back to the original account again and uh, I will do a, a couple of searches. So I will do a key server lookup and let's try another one, mortar at karuni.com. And here you can see that there are actually three different. This uh, could mean that uh, this person have created a key lost it, had to regenerate it, and maybe lost it again, and uh, made a third one. Or it could be that the first keys were made with a low key length, and he wanted to have a higher key length. So in a situation like this, where you see several keys, it's important to check the date. They're all made June the 7th, to check on the time. The newest one is the top one, okay? So the likelihood is that the newest key is the one that is in use because the older keys has probably been overwritten by the new one. So in this situation, this is the one to delete. Uh, this is the one to import. You can actually not delete keys from this key server. So if you make many keys, it can also look a little bit messy. But always go for the newest key and import. When I now go into my uh, manage keys again, the first key is my own. The second key is the one that I have just imported. Then when you have imported a lot of keys, you don't have space for more than 30. And we had a solution for that. So what you can do in that situation, you can take, for example, Morton's key, control L. Control C for copy. Then you can close, go into contact, 
find Morton, edit him or add him, and all you have to do is to add the PGP key down here in the notes. And you have it here, and you save. Then your contacts will look like this, and you can easily see here that they have a key. This will work in the same way when you send a message. So if the keys are not found in here on this list, it will find it in the contact because we have marked scan contacts. And in this way, you can have as many keys as you would like in your system. So now you have imported other people's keys. You have your own keys, public and private, and you're actually ready to start to send some PGP 